<laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. How you doing? Good. Good. Welcome to Halloween Horror Nights 23 uh, media preview. I'm so happy we're doing this again because last year's was, was such a tremendous success with everybody involved. Uh, before we get started, I do need you guys to do one thing for me and give a round of applause to everybody that worked on this event tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Did an awesome job. Thanks, everybody involved. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights 23, uh, 23 years. Uh, long time. We've been doing this a long, long time. And this year, uh, we are bigger and better than ever. Uh, the, the focus of this year was obviously, you know, what, what evil takes root. And, and what is rooted in this event this year are all the intellectual properties that we're bringing together along with our original content that we do uh, every single year that we love to do. And we're bringing this all together. And we've worked with some amazing uh, properties this year that I'm going to take you guys through very briefly right now. And I'm sure we'll be talking to each other uh, as we move through the night tonight. Uh, but Halloween Hearts 23 is comprised of eight haunted mazes. Not seven, eight. We're back to eight again. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and uh, the first one we'll talk about is Afterlife Death's Vengeance. Every year we do a 3D maze, a UV-based 3D maze. Uh, we've done mazes in the past that called like the in-between. That was more about creating surreal environments, disorienting you in, in many ways possible. Last year we worked with Ben and Teller to create a more comedically based three-dimensional maze using UV. This year, we want to take a story that was a little bit darker. We want to tell a story that had uh, some more, uh, again, darker moments to it. Uh, and this storyline uh, involves uh, a serial killer named Bobby the Blade. And uh, he's a very bad guy. It, it takes place in the uh, 1920s, 1930s era. Uh, he's a serial killer in the town of Cary, Ohio, which is a town we love to base a lot of our original mazes in. Uh, and you're witnessing, uh, that's actually the hometown of Laura Wallace our show director. Uh, yes, it's, so we've kind of dubbed it the Hellmouth for all that is evil. Uh, <laughs> not because of her at all, I promise. Uh, she's wonderful. Um, but yeah, so uh, it takes place in Cary, Ohio. Bobby the Blade, he's a serial killer, has killed many people, and you're witnessing his final day on Earth. You're literally going to see him be executed. And then from there, taking his journey as his victims take their revenge on him. And it's all of these amazing rooms that we're taking the guests through uh, that also disorient you. Um, there are some images in here that are unlike anything we've created thus far in a three-dimensional maze. Uh, yes, the vortex is in there. <laughs> uh, that's got to be in every 3D maze we do if we can fit it in. Uh, so yeah, we're really excited about this maze. It has a lot of beautiful aesthetics, uh, but also a very dark and terrifying storyline that's unique to some of the three-dimensional mazes we've done in the past. All right. Havoc. We did this maze a couple years ago, and for the fans of Horror Nights, this was a maze they absolutely loved. And we've wanted to do a sequel for many years. Uh, and this year, we went ahead and did that. Uh, but always, when we're doing anything with a brand that we create, we want to try and change it uh, if we're going to present it again. So in this case, it was all about maintaining the characters that were in that maze, which were these um, manic super soldiers, uh, but placing them in a different environment. Uh, David Hughes and I have wanted to do a maze based in a train for years, and we've done that this year. The entire first half of this maze is in train cars. Uh, you're actually on a transit taking our, our manic super soldiers uh, to, from one location to another. And along the way, of course, something horrible goes wrong. Um, they take over the train. They actually derail it. In the middle of the maze is a derailment scene. And the back half, you're witnessing just the destruction of this train into a small town. And the dogs of war have been released. Uh, it's a really uh, energized maze. It's a very violent maze. Uh, and something we're really proud of, because uh, it's, it's, it'll be over in our disaster uh, extended queue. And there are some sets that we have never attempted before in a disaster queue line. The scale of this maze is, is pretty epic uh, for what we've done in the past with disaster. So we're really, really proud of it. Urban Legends La Yadona. This was a maze that was originally done uh, in our sister park uh, in Hollywood. Uh, we actually went out there a couple years ago and actually went through it, and it was absolutely gorgeous. We loved it. Um, and so we decided to bring that maze here for our Orlando guests. Uh, it is a, a beautiful maze. The story, if you're unfamiliar, is an uh, urban legend that deals with a woman named uh, woman, uh, La Llorona, the, the weeping woman. Uh, and the story goes, she loved a man. And she, wanted, she would do anything to be with this man, including what she thought was the only way she could be with him was killing her children. She just, she kills them, disposes of them, 
goes after the man, and of course, this horrific act that she commits, he of course turns her away. Who wouldn't? She's torn, and she kills herself, drowns herself. Sometimes it's a lake, sometimes it's a river. The legend varies uh, depending on who's telling it and what era of the region it's being told. But the one thing that's always the same is that she forever walks the earth in search of the children that she killed. And that is the storyline that we're creating for this maze. Again, it's a very dark storyline. The aesthetics are beautiful. This maze is gorgeous. It's one of our tents. And uh, there was a maze we did a couple years ago called Nevermore. It was based on the works of Edgar Allan Poe. And uh, that was the maze to beat as far as environment and detail. For us, that was the one to beat. And I believe we have with La Garona. This maze is gorgeous um, and terrifying, absolutely terrifying. You're going to see La Garona in many different phases. She's her most feminine in the beginning of the maze. And as you walk through, she begins to decay, become a little more demonic. You can see some of the masks over uh, on the uh, left side of the, of the theater. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you're going through and you're seeing her take on this change. Uh, the front half of the maze is very similar to what Hollywood produced. We loved it. We didn't want to change a whole lot. The back half, we did change. Uh, in Hollywood, they did a lot of barn aesthetics. It was a lot of um, rustic um, uh, detail. And we did barn last year in Walking Dead. We didn't want to do those aesthetics again, so we changed it. We're actually taking you into her realm in the back half of the maze. You're going into her, her, her world, uh, and it takes on those aesthetics. It's a watery realm. Uh, we've got performers on Heelys, uh, gliding past you as you're walking by. Uh, so a lot of really neat details are going into this maze. Really proud of it. And we're hoping the Urban Legends tagline is something we can continue in the future with different types of Urban Legends. The Cabin in the Woods. Now, there are films that we'll watch and immediately go, that has to be a maze. This was one of those movies. Uh, from the moment we saw it, we knew we wanted to translate this into a haunted experience. It has everything in it that requires us to build a maze. Variety of characters. Definitely variety of environment. If you've never seen this movie, you need to immediately. It is one of the coolest horror films. It, it took the, the, the you know, teenagers in the woods in a cabin genre and completely turned it on its head. Uh, it is an amazing film directed by Drew Goddard, who we did work with on this maze quite intently. Um, he's an awesome guy. He gave us all kinds of ideas. Also a few liberties in the maze. You may or may not see a couple of characters from our past in the maze in some fashion. Uh, and we're definitely taking you through the storyline of the film as it happened at that time. We have a Q-Line video that we actually we just saw a cut of today that is awesome. We actually have an animated sequence in our Q-Line video. Uh, I won't go into it too, in too detail because I don't, I don't want to give it away, but it is a very cool sequence that tells the story. And we're actually placing the guests in a role. You guys are working for the facility that is this secret arena where these monsters are kept. Uh, and we're, you're taking on a role as you go through the maze. There are video moments in certain points throughout the maze that carry the story along right before that purge button is hit, and then all hell breaks loose. Elevator scene? We're doing it. Yeah. It's to scale. It is awesome. Yeah, it's there. So, again, there are movies we watch that we immediately go, we got to do that. And fortunately for us this year, we were able to. And uh, it is very cool. It is one of my favorites. Evil Dead. Woo! Evil Dead fans, come on. Woo! All right. uh, based on an amazing trilogy of films uh, by Sam Raimi. Uh, this is the, the remake, the 2013 remake uh, that came out just this past year. Uh, for, for me, I'm a huge uh, Evil Dead fan. All oh, the design team, many of us are, are huge Evil Dead fans. And like everyone that went to see that movie, it was just in hopes that it was going to be something really, really cool. And thank God it was, because it, it is a really great movie. They, the gore was so amped up in that movie, and that's immediately what we attached to. David Hughes and I actually went out um, to California to do a, a screening well before it opened uh, with John Murdy from Hollywood. We were all watching this movie in this small screening room, and the movie's playing. And we're watching it, and every time something happened, we would turn and go, We gotta do that! We have to do that! Did you see what happened? You jumped your arm off, we gotta do that! We're doing it. This movie is all the best scenes that you know from that film played out. We have a room that deals in vomit. It's there. It's there. This is an elaborate maze for us because we had to figure out ways to do some of these effects to allow for drainage because there's a lot of, of gross water and goo effects going on in this maze. 
Um, also, there are masks displayed out here. There are prosthetics and contacts in this maze, which is also something that we rarely do in our mazes. Uh, this year we're doing it. We want to get these guys looking as close to the film as humanly possible. But uh, you're, you're taking the entire story, from the book being open to the, the, the phrases being said, uh, to all of the gore moments that happen all the way through, to an end moment uh, with the blood rain finale, with the cabin and the jeep overturned. Everything. We've got it. It's all there. Really excited. Resident Evil Escape from Raccoon City. Awesome video game series. We, uh, we, this is something we wanted to do for a little while as well. We had a great success with Silent Hill last year, uh, and, and we really wanted to keep the video game train rolling a little bit. And this was definitely a property that we, we kind of attached to immediately, but we knew it had to be the games. It has to be the games. Um, and for us, we kind of wanted to do this it's a little bit retro, so we kind of stuck in games two and three. That's where this maze takes place. Uh, these are some of the most impressive sets that I think we've done in a long time. In my opinion, I think the scale is literally through the roof. Uh, the opening scene of this maze is the opening stage in Resident Evil. Um, you're seeing it right there. Uh, and you're going through environments. It, you're, it's a storyline. Leon, you're gonna see Leon in the opening scene. He's telling you, I gotta get these survivors out. He's taking you on a journey. Uh, you're going through. Yes, do we have zombies in the maze? A few. Do we have creatures? You bet. Alpha Hunter, Liquors, Nemesis, uh, you name it, it is in this maze, and it's big, big as life. Uh, again, the scale. Uh, the RPD, I think there was a picture released a couple days ago online. It is as big as it looks. It's awesome. We have a helicopter. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, so again, we're, we're really just trying to transport people into the game. If Silent Hill was about bringing the game to life, this is about putting people inside the video game. We even have a room that we're calling Paused. This was a crazy creative session that we were in one day, just going through what, what could we do with this maze. And suddenly we all just kind of stopped, and uh, one of us was like, we should do a pause screen. You literally pause the game, and let's freeze the action. Let's do something we can never do while it's moving. So the scene is amazing. You are seeing a tyrant literally over, jumping over a building down as Leon is floating in the air, firing up at it. It's frozen in time. It is so cool. Can't wait for you guys to see it. It, it. it blew us away. We installed the tyrant a couple nights ago. We looked at it and just went, hey, that's big. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. An American werewolf in London. Uh, another, there's a lot of mazes where we, these are ones we've wanted to do for a long, long time. And finally this year seems to be a culmination of being able to do some certain things. We've tried to do this maze for about five, six years, I guess in various forms. Finally this year, the planets aligned and we were able to. And the best yet is that we've had extensive collaboration with John Landis on this. Uh, he was here with us during the creative process. He actually changed many portions of the maze that we originally created. Uh, uh, you know, basically challenging us to go, no, you have to do this. The wolf has to look like this. It has to move like this. This can't be a costume. You cannot create this with a person inside. It has to move like it does in the movie. And that was a huge challenge, because for us, if we weren't able to get the wolf right, we did not have a maze. So that was, that was challenge number one, and we have accomplished it. This wolf, wolves, are the most impressive puppets we've ever produced for our mazes. Um, they are puppet-driven, um, but you wouldn't know it at all. These things move so fluidly, uh, articulated, they are, Fantastic. Uh, we were filming some approval videos for John the other day, and I'm filming with my iPhone, and David was manning the puppet, and lunged it forward, and I literally jumped. Literally, and I don't, ever. And I literally jumped and went, that is terrifying. <laughs> and we said that to John Landis. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, you're right, it's awesome, go. So we got the golden seal of approval, and again, this is a maze taking you through the events of that movie, chronologically. The Slaughtered Lamb, you're going to be inside. You're going to hear the dialogue from the movie. What's that star on the wall? You made me miss. All those things, those highlights will happen in the maze. Uh, we're taking it into many of um, David's dream sequences. Uh, you know, all the, um, you know, in his home, when his, when his family gets attacked. Uh, we're taking you into the tube. We have a ceiling. It's an actual subway tube. 
Um, again, these are things for us that, that we're kind of breaking some boundaries that we haven't attempted before in trying to make it feel exactly like you know it as the film. Um, Piccadilly, we have it. We have a bus. Again, the scale of these things are beyond anything we've attempted before. Uh, and the characters are looking fantastic. And those wolves, I cannot wait for you guys to see those for the first time because they're going to blow your minds. Walking Dead, no safe haven. Uh, Walking Dead, we did it last year. Great success, did an amazing job for the event. Uh, it was kind of a no-brainer to bring that back again. Uh, but we didn't want to do the same thing. We also, we wanted to give it a little more justice. We had it in our disaster queue last year, and we, we really felt the limitations of that space for an IP brand of that size. So we decided, well, this year we need to definitely put it indoors. It's over in our parade building facility. Um, and it's taking you through season three only. It is all about season three. You are gonna start in Woodbury. Our facade is the arena from season three. You're seeing chained zombies, chained to concrete plinths as they're walking by. You're walking into the uh, iconic moments from Woodbury. Governor's Aquarium, yes, it's there. It's bubbling, there, there's heads in there. Um, so yeah, all the iconic things from, from season three. And so you're in Woodbury, you're seeing the, the gate, you know, the semi-trailer that kind of is your, is your barrier from the safety of Woodbury to the outside world. We've done that. Taking you to the prison. We have the prison yard, we have the tower. Again, it was all about just expanding the environments and then filling this place with as many zombies as we possibly could. Walkers, as many walkers as we possibly could. Um, so yeah, it, it, is, it, is, it is a much better detailed maze than we did last year. Although we were really happy with it, this is kind of upping the ante for us. We knew if we were gonna do it again, we had to up the ante. Uh, and I, I believe we've done that with Walking Dead. And so those are the eight mazes that are featured in the event this year. All varied aesthetics, varied characters, varied environments. Uh, we're really happy with the slate. Uh, and, that, 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 and that just takes you into the street program, which is also a first for us. Like, do you want me to go through the street program? Is that cool, Brittany? All right, cool. Uh, they said only houses. So like, mm -hmm. Let's do the street program. Um, there's no slide for that, by the way. Uh, Walking Dead is our main thematic for all of the street program this year. This is a first for us. We've never taken the thematic and expanded it into the entire park. Uh, we posted a photo last night on Twitter as we were installing our tank. We have a tank. It's in New York, which will become Atlanta, all based in season one. Uh, we're doing uh, scenes from season three, the clear episode. That's featured and all the aesthetics from that. You can kind of see, I think we have some of the props. Yeah, on either side. These, uh, these act will actually live out in the zone in Hollywood. And there's a few more. Um, and we'll have walkers uh, roaming around these things and a few more surprises. We're raising a barn very soon near Central Park. Uh, it's an actual barn. You will walk through it. Uh, and you will see everything. You will be burning around you as you're walking through. Uh, and again, so again, it was just about taking all those iconic moments from season one, two, and three, blowing them out, making them bigger than we've ever done before with a single IP across the entire um, uh, section of Universal Studios. Uh, so yeah, we're really excited about it. Those are just a few of the things. We've got a lot of surprises. Central Park is going to blow your minds. We've got some surprises in there that, that are things we've, we've never done before with some of our characters. Uh, uh, there's one in particular that I'm sure you're going to know what I'm talking about when you see it. So again, we're really excited about how everything is coming together, all the different varied aspects of the event, uh, and then all making up Halloween Hard Nights 23. And, and I can't tell you enough how much I can't wait for you guys to come and see it. Because uh, there's so much passion involved with this project from everybody involved on the design team and the tech team. Uh, they just do amazing work every single year, and it's our hope that everybody enjoys it. So. That's what I've got for today, uh, but I'm sure we'll talk to you guys a lot more as the night goes on. But thanks for your time. It's good to see so many familiar faces. So, there you go.